So your arms don't swing when walking. How does that reflect on your health? Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg with Wellness for Life. And if you'd like to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So arm swing may seem like a trivial thing. It's like, what's the big deal if you swing or don't, how it looks? It's just aesthetic. I mean, dancers maybe, or, but does it really matter for everybody? Yes. Arm swing is one of the most fundamental patterns in the body. The gait reflex is a foundation of a lot of patterns in your nervous system. It starts developing when you first crawl. So somewhere around six months or so, uh, your body learns, your nervous system, you figure out that the arm should move opposite to the leg. And that holds true for walking, it holds true for crawling. It's a gait reflex, it's called a cross-crawl pattern. And because it's so fundamental, because it's involved with so many different developments in the body, it can be devastating if this doesn't develop properly. So dyslexia, for example, has been associated with poor gait patterns. And a lot of people with dyslexia will actually benefit from going back to crawling, from practicing the basic gait reflex again. And people who are clumsy, who sprain their ankles, who are injury prone or accident prone, that is also a reflection of brain patterns. How well balanced, how precise is that nervous system? And it all starts with a gait reflex. But where most people really start to pay attention is when we start talking about dementia. Because one of the earliest signs of dementia that you can pick up way, way, way before there's any memory issues or any brain scan abnormalities, it's a slight loss of gait pattern. So if you lose the arm swing, if there is less of a, an amount of arm swing, if there is less magnitude, or if there is more on one side than the other, or if there's an arrhythmic gait pattern, all of those are very early indicators of neurodegenerative disease, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So here's a quote from New England Journal of Medicine, 2002. The presence of gait abnormalities is a significant predictor of risk of developing dementia. So even in the medical field, they know this. In chiropractic neurology and functional neurology, they've worked with this for decades, and they know that one of the very first things to look for is gait. When you evaluate a person, when you evaluate their neurological reflexes, gait is one of the very first things that you want to look at. So, Prevention is key though, and as with everything, if you prevent it, if you build up a function stronger before it deteriorates, then your chances of not having a problem is much, much greater. So in the case of Parkinson's, for example, by the time that they diagnose the disease, uh, once they have some stiffness and, and some shuffling gait and, and some speech abnormalities, even in the early stages of that, they have about 50 to 80% loss of the critical neurons, of the dopamine producing neurons in the substantia nigra area of the brain. So by the time they find it, you already lost 50 to 80%. What if you could prevent it? What if you could support the body's function as much as possible with all the other things that we talk about on this channel, but in this case, more specifically, by practicing gait, by practicing paying attention to how you're moving, to what's the extent, what's the excursion of the gait, and what's the symmetry of the pattern from side to side. So in order to understand a little bit more, we want to know that the brain controls everything in the body, but the brain doesn't know anything it's not being told. So the brain relies exclusively on signals. And these signals come from receptors that provide feedback. 
So once we have lost some of that gait pattern, some of that gait uh, arm swing movement, then the brain has lost the control over the muscle. But part of that is because the brain lost some of the feedback. And now the brain starts degenerating because it is not as active, because it is not receiving information, it is not sending signals out. So the brain and neuroplasticity is functioning in a way that the brain is just like a muscle. If you work it out, you'll maintain the strength. You work out a muscle by putting tension on it, but you work out the, the brain by sending signals to it and making the brain produce signals. And gait is one of those things. So that the more precise your gait, the more precise the execution, the more precise the feedback have to be, and the stronger and healthier the brain cells have to be. So can you reverse neurodegenerative disease? I believe you can reverse some of the early stages. I don't know to what extent, and I don't know if you can reverse some of the severe cases, but I think that you can reverse some of the earlier stages, but even more importantly, you can prevent it by giving the body the signals and the nutrition that it needs, you can maintain optimal function. So gait in arm swing is tremendously important for your health. It is not a small little trivial deal. So look around you, look at the people that you care about and look at how many people are walking around like this. Or walk, look at how many people who are swinging one arm and not the other. That is a brain imbalance. In the early stages, you can correct it, but you have to pay attention and you have to do something about it. And you have to be consistent and patient. If you enjoy content like this, where we learn how the body really works for optimum health, make sure that you share this content with as many people as you can, because this is the life-saving stuff. There is nothing more important than health. If we don't have health, we have nothing. Help us save some lives, share this content, and make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that we can keep this content coming your way. Thanks for watching.